Hi, I'm Nick Ritter, and welcome to another Cavalry tutorial. You'll notice that we're not in Cavalry, we're in After Effects. I'm going to be looking at a couple of the text animations that I did recently for a client, and then I'll recreate the same effect in Cavalry, but with one big addition that Cavalry brings to the table. I have several graphics going on in this one project file, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be just looking at two of the graphics. The first one, I'll go ahead and play it for you. So the top letters, they grow up from nothing, have a little bit of overshoot to them, and then the two lines there at the bottom kind of like ripples down one line at a time. Okay, so let's take a look at this project here in Cavalry. Here's a little sneak peek of what we'll be making, uh, but I'll start from scratch here just for you guys. So we'll call this uh, text one tutorial. Open that up. So I'll create a text layer here. I'll set this to center and middle. Increase our size. And let's move this down to, I don't know, railway today. Why not? Black. I'll change this text to like and subscribe. Oh, a little too big. All right, that looks fine. This process I'm about to show you is the main process that I used to animate text here in Cavalry. So the first thing you do, you have your text layer, hit the plus button on deformers, and go down to sub mesh. Now this deformer takes a look at a single layer and tells Cavalry, I want to treat each letter like its own layer. So, and this is what allows you to animate in like one word at a time or one letter at a time uh, in a procedural way. I'll double click on sub mesh to bring it up in our attribute editor. Within the submesh, we want to animate the scale. So I'll create a keyframe, set the beginning to zero, and then we'll go four, then we'll go to 1.05. So this is our 5% overshoot. We'll go to the right three frames and let's just set that to one. Currently, this is all being treated like just one big shape. So I'll direct your attention to the time offset parameter of our submesh. When you move this, it controls where in the timeline it changes the time offset for the animation. And instead of manually setting this, I can right click, add behavior, and click on stagger. And already you can see what the stagger behavior is doing. It's not working quite the way we want it to yet. So if you want the text to come from nothing into fully animated, then you have to set the offset to be in the negative version of whatever the maximum is. There's a way to procedurally do this. So what you do is you add a math node. So in this case, it would likely be a JS math or a math. I'll keep it to math to keep it simple. What math does is it takes in a number, so we'll connect this maximum into first, and then you can apply an operation to it. So in this case, I want to multiply five by negative one, and then you connect this output from your math node into the offset. So now it's always gonna be set to the negative version of the maximum number. In practice, I find this takes too many steps to get there, and so I often just manually type it in. Okay, so with the offset applied, you'll see that our text is totally gone, and I'll animate that. Fantastic. It does animate from the right and not the left. I want it to animate from the left, just like the original video. So to do that, in the stagger node, you can click on the graph button. This graph determines how the stagger is handled. So if I create a new point and turn this line into a curve, then when we animate it, It's not the same distribution all the way through, but it keeps all of the first letters really close together animation-wise, and then it, as it goes along, it spaces out how long each letter animates in. We can really see this in action if we increase that to from five to 10. So that's what the graph does. I'm going to delete that and then just click this button over here, which reverses that graph. So then when I play it, it goes from the front to the back. So, so far, this is pretty close to the same animation that we have in After Effects. The only thing I want to do is edit the keyframes in the graph editor. So I'll click this graph editor button, select both of these final keyframes, change the interpolation to Bezier, and then let's pull those down significantly to about there, just see how that feels. Hey, that feels pretty good. We're dealing with gray. I don't want to deal with gray. So what I will do is connect this blue color over to our text shape, fill color. And then we also need a background. So instead of a solid, Cavalry calls it a background shape. And then you can connect a color from your scene palette. And I'll make that white and then drag this all the way down. Okay, I'm going to put this math as a child 
of our text shape here. And rename that to header. And then I'll move that up just a little bit. We have two more layers of text to do. And I'll just add one at a time. The alignment will go center, vertical alignment, go to middle again. And then uh, here in the text, I'll say to see more videos. So that's our line two. We'll change this up to railway and then switch that over. So we've got black here. So let's go to maybe medium. And then what's our font size for our header it is about 160. So here let's go with about 80. Actually, 90 doesn't look too bad. And then we'll change the letter spacing to about three and the word spacing to about eight. Rename this to line one. So here in line one, we'll go through the same process. In deformers, we'll add submesh. And then within submesh, under time offset, we'll right click, add behavior, and stagger. The difference here is I don't want to animate by letter, I want to animate by word. So within the submesh, level mode, it's a drop down, and you can select text words. Go to our time editor, and we'll go to about there, move our position up to about that point. Animate that down, 5, 10, 12, and then change that to 0. And then to have the correct order in animation, we'll change this graph over here, reverse it, and then set this offset to be negative 5. I actually think I had this at maybe 8, so we'll try that. And then change the graph editor, set that interpolation. I believe in After Effects this interpolation was accidentally set to here, but I thought it looked pretty good. And then we'll set the final curve like that. Maybe sticking to five was the best thing to do. The animation works great. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this line just by hitting Control or Command D. We'll rename this to line two and then move to where it's all the way animated and change this position of line two to about there. And then we just need to change the text like this one. So like and subscribe to see more videos like this one. I know these are such bad jokes. <laughs> okay, and that's pretty close. This isn't a design tutorial. This is an animation tutorial. And they animated in it at the same time. So let's fix that. Yeah, that should work. The lines are animated, so now we'll set up our mask shapes. I just used a rectangle like that. Pull out the width. I, I always go way more than I need, because why not? And then I want to move this to just above, I don't know what they're called, but the little insets here on the text. And then we'll set this, so this rectangle shape, we'll call this line one mat. And so I'll set this to be line one's new mask. The text disappeared, and that's because we have to set the mask to be subtract. And I'll make this a child of line one. And let's duplicate that, set that as a child of line two, change the name, line two mat, and then set that to be a mask of line two. And then again, we double click on line two, go into mask, set to subtract. And then let us move this line two mat down, set it about there. Now our text reveals the way that I want it to, and I'll bring this header up to the top so that it comes out from behind the blue text. And there we go. So per letter animation growing up from nothing, and then per word animation coming out from behind a mask. Okay, let's move on. So looking back at After Effects, I'll look at another graphic. And this is a big long graphic here but I'll just focus on this first bit. I find myself using this trick a lot. Okay, the word is fast, and so it's got the speed lines, and it's got the follow-through animation as it like wiggles to a stop. And then later on, I have it animate from bold to medium, I think, or book. The way I did that is I just parented the book version of this text to the bold version of the text, and then I just cut from one to the next. But it's in the middle of the animation, so it looks pretty natural. Click on the fast bold text. I use the CC bender effect, and that's what gives us this little bend effect here. 
you set the base of the effect, you set the top of the effect, you set the style of the effect, fairly straightforward, and then I just manually animate that in. And then of course the lines are just three strokes, and then I animate the trim paths. So here we are in Cavalry, we'll be making something like that here. And in this case, I guess we only have a few layers. And like with the last one, I'll just start from scratch. Create a new composition. We'll name this one Text to Tutorial. First thing we need is the text here. And as is tradition, I'll just change that to Fast, Center, Middle, and then let's go with Railway again. Set that to Black, because why not? font size, pull that up. And then first thing we'll animate is our position. So I'll animate it from right to left. Start there, go forward four frames and set that to zero. And then I'll add a little bit of easing. Ooh, that's a lot. So now animates in, still fairly boring. What you do to create that wobbly effect is on our layer under deformers, you go down to pinch. And when you click on this, it creates three different nodes. It creates the pinch node, pinch binder, pinch mover. The pinch binder, this sets the influence of whatever is being like pinched. And then we look at the pinch mover, which is this little crosshair. And you can set that to be other different shapes here, but I like it set to cross. You click and drag on that. It's almost like a puppet pin and it uses the influence of the circle area to move and deform the shape or text or whatever. Set that back to zero. I believe this pinch mover, all it is a null node, which you can create down here just as a null. But we'll go into this pinch binder though and change the shape type here to linear. This sets up where the bend will start and where it'll end. We'll rotate this negative 90 degrees, move the position up, and then change the X size because it's rotated. So these are inverse now. So we'll change the X size so it fits the whole text like that. I like to err on the side of maybe a little bit less, at least for this effect. And now when you change the position X, moves up and down and it stretches from that bottom point. So the arrow has got to be pointing down. And then when you change the position Y of our pinch mover, it moves like that. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over really far and then open up our fall off graph. And it already has an S curve in here for us. So we'll move these handles to make the bend look the way that I want it to. And then it gets more extreme as it goes. And we'll go something like that. There's a couple ways to animate this pinch effect. One is by opening up the pinch node and animating the strength. And this will let you go into the negatives as well for overshoot animation. And then the other way to do it is to animate this pinch mover position. But to keep it procedural, we'll use this strength attribute here. So we'll start it at 100, and we'll go two frames in, add a keyframe, we'll go four frames, we'll go negative 80, and then I forgot this was overshoot, so I'm gonna move this keyframe over by two, and then a four frames away from the original, I'll set this to be zero. So now, as the text animates in, it does that little wobble, secondary motion overshoot. Kind of cool, and I think I want to extend this out so it goes even longer. Yeah, something like that. Now we have our fast text. It's got this bend motion to it. And now let's add our speed lines for a little bit of flair. I'll relabel this to fast and then clear out our attribute editor. As with anything in Cavalry, there's lots of ways to execute on a given task. In this video, I'll be using the rectangle method. So I'll add the rectangle here. Oh yeah, let's set this fast to be maybe this red color. Then we'll do the same thing with our rectangle shape here. So we'll set the height to be about like that. And then with this rectangle shape selected, hold down Alt or Option, and then click on this duplicator button up here in your shelf. And within the duplicator, change the distribution from grid to linear and then horizontal to vertical. And we'll change the size from 200 to about there-ish. And then move the duplicator to the right the next thing we'll do is under shape scale, I'll right click that, add behavior, and click on stagger, but only stagger on the X axis. So now we have a stagger that goes from a minimum of zero to a maximum of five. Think of this as a minimum of 0% and a maximum of 500%. Uh, set your length to taste there, we'll say. Actually, let's set this to maybe three. The alignment on these duplicates are all center aligned. And so to align all of these to the left, you come to the original shape. So our rectangle shape here, 
and I'll solo that. Add a deformer, a line, open that up, and change the X parameter until you see all of them aligning to the left. Back in our duplicator, position that to taste, and then we'll make the duplicator a child of our text. So that way it moves along with it. Then from our original shape, we can animate our size uh, attribute right here. So we'll go from 100, set a keyframe, go forward four frames, and then set that to be zero. So now the speed lines go away as it slows down. Let's click play. There we have it. We have animated text on a per character basis. We've animated it with this wiggle effect, speed lines. Okay, the last bit of this fast word, if you remember, is I animated the text going from a bold weight to a thinner weight. And I used two different layers in After Effects. But in Cavalry, the Cavalry supports variable fonts. They're pretty new, so there's really not a lot of variable fonts out there, but Railway is one of them. So under the font attribute, you'll see this little hamburger menu pop up. If you're in any font that doesn't support variable fonts, you won't see this button. But in this case we do, so I'll click that, and then we can animate from weight 900 down to weight 100 if we want. And just look at how smooth that is. This is so awesome. We'll just animate that real quick. Start at that keyframe. We'll go forward five keyframes and animate this down to 300. Go into our graph editor, select our keyframes and change the interpolation. Let's just make that a really snappy transition. And then we'll play through our animation and zoop, there it goes. How cool is that? That's the main portion of this video. I wanted to show you a couple more cool things with working with text in Cavalry that may be helpful to you depending on the project you're doing. I'll create a new composition for this. Create our text layer and uh, center, middle, set that to black and increase the font size. All this is just my preference. And we'll even set the color to our blue. Now with your text shape selected, you can come up here to the menu, click on shape and select separate. Couple things. One, it created a group of custom shapes, one for each letter, and it maintains the exact spot of that letter. So if you need to animate each letter in a very custom way, this is the way to do it. And furthermore, if you need to animate the specific points on a given layer, then you just click on the Edit Shape tool, and you'll see where all the points are in your layer. You can double click it, and it says, this shape is not editable. Would you like to make it editable? You click Yes. So it creates a new custom shape, but this one's an editable custom shape. And now you can select any one of these points. And then with the custom shape open, over here on the left, you can set a keyframe on this path uh, attribute, and that's how you animate those paths. Optionally, you can also click the text and go up to shape and make editable. And it'll set the whole thing as just one custom shape, but you can edit paths. Another option is you can select any number of the custom shapes here, go up to shape and select make editable, or you can set it to make editable copy but now each one of our letters is editable and you can animate those paths. You'll notice that when I separated or made the shapes editable, it lost its color information. I know this is a bug that they're fixing, uh, but for the time being, you just come back over to the scene palette and connect up all the colors that you need. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe to see more videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.